Hare Krishna. This video is continuation of my previous video on Krishna book. So this is my humble request to all audience to check out previous videos. So that you can enjoy and understand the transcendental pastimes of Lord Shri Krishna. Links are in description. Chapter 4. Kamsa Begins His Persecutions After Vasudeva adjusted all the doors and gates, the gatekeepers awoke and heard the newborn child crying. Kamsa was waiting to hear the news of the child's birth, and the gatekeepers immediately approached him and informed him that the child was born. At that time, Kamsa got up from his bed very quickly and exclaimed, Now the cruel death of my life is born. Kamsa became perplexed now that his death was approaching, and his hair stood on end. Immediately he proceeded toward the place where the child was born. Devaki, on seeing her brother approaching, prayed in a very meek attitude to Kamsa. My dear brother, please do not kill this female child. I promise that this child will be the wife of your son. Therefore don't kill her. You are not to be killed by any female child. That was the omen. You are to be killed by a male child, so please do not kill her. My dear brother, you have killed so many of my children who were just born, shining as the sun. That is not your fault. You have been advised by demoniac friends to kill my children. But now I beg you to excuse this girl. Let her live as my daughter. Kamsa was so cruel that he did not listen to the beautiful prayers of his sister Devaki. He forcibly grabbed the newborn child to rebuke his sister and attempted to dash her on the stone mercilessly. This is a graphic example of a cruel brother who could sacrifice all relationships for the sake of personal gratification. But immediately the child slipped out of his hands, went up in the sky, and appeared with eight arms as the younger sister of Vishnu. She was decorated with a nice dress and flower garlands and ornaments. In her eight hands she held a bow, lancet, arrows, bell, conch shell, disc, club, and shield. Seeing the appearance of the child, who was actually the goddess Durga, all the demigods from different planets like Siddhaloka, Charnaloka, Gandharvaloka, Apsaraloka, Kanaraloka, and Urugaloka, presented her articles and began to offer their respective prayers. From above, the goddess addressed Kamsa. You rascal, how can you kill me? The child who will kill you is already born before me somewhere within this world. Don't be so cruel to your poor sister. After this appearance, the goddess Durga became known by various names in various parts of the world. After hearing these words, Kamsa became very much overwhelmed with fear. Out of pity, he immediately released Vasudeva and Devaki from the bondage of their shackles, and very politely began to address them. He said, My dear sister and brother-in-law, I have acted just like a demon in killing my own nephews. I have given up all consideration of our intimate relationship. I do not know what will be the result of these acts of mine. Probably I shall be sent to the hell where killers of the Brahmins go. I am surprised, however, that the celestial prophecy has not come true. False propaganda is not found only in the human society. Now it appears that even the celestial denizens speak lies. Because I believed in the words of the celestial denizens, I have committed so many sins by killing the children of my sister. My dear Vasudeva and Devaki, you are both very great souls. I have nothing to instruct you, but still I request that you not be sorry for the death of your children. Every one of us is under the control of superior power, and that superior power does not allow us to remain together. We are bound to be separated from our friends and relatives in due course of time. But we must know for certain that even after the disappearance of the different material bodies, the soul remains intact eternally. For example, there are many pots made of earthly clay, and they are prepared and also broken. But in spite of this, the earth remains as it is perpetually. Similarly, the bodies of the soul under different conditions are made and destroyed, but the spirit soul remains eternally. So there is nothing to lament over. Everyone should understand that this material body is different from the spirit soul, and so long as one does not come to that understanding, he is sure to accept the processes of transmigration from one body to another. My dear sister Devaki, you are so gentle and kind. Please excuse me. Don't be aggrieved by the death of your children, which I have caused. Actually, this was not done by me because all these are predestined activities. One has to act according to the predestined plan, even unwillingly. People misunderstand that with the end of the body, the self dies, or they think that one can kill another living entity. All these misconceptions oblige one to accept the conditions of material existence. In other words, as long as one is not firmly convinced of the eternality of the soul, one is subjected to the tribulation of being killer and killed. My dear sister Devaki and brother-in-law Vasudev, kindly excuse the atrocities I have committed against you. I am very poor-hearted, and you are so great-hearted, so take compassion upon me and excuse me. While Kamsa was speaking to his brother-in-law and sister, tears flowed from his eyes and he fell down at their feet. Believing the words of Durga Devi, whom he had tried to kill, Kamsa immediately released his brother-in-law and sister. He personally unlocked the iron shackles and very sympathetically showed his friendship, just like a family member. When Devaki saw her brother so repentant, she also became pacified and forgot all his atrocious activities against her children. Vasudev also, forgetting all past incidents, spoke smilingly with his brother-in-law. Vasudev told Kamsa, My dear fortunate brother-in-law, 
What you are saying about the material body and the soul is correct. Every living entity is born ignorant, understanding this material body to be his self. This conception of life is due to ignorance, and on the basis of this ignorance, we create enmity or friendship. Lamentation, jubilation, fearfulness, envy, greed, illusion, and madness are different features of our material concept of life. A person influenced like this engages in enmity due only to the material body. Being engaged in such activities, we forget our eternal relationship with the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Vasudev took the opportunity of Kamsa's benevolence and informed him that his atheistic activities were also due to this misconception of life, namely taking the material body to be the self. When Vasudev talked with Kamsa in such an illuminating way, Kamsa became very pleased, and his guilt for killing his nephews subdued. With the permission of his sister Devaki and brother-in-law Vasudev, he returned to his home with a relieved mind. But the next day, Kamsa called all his counselors together and narrated to them all the incidents that had happened the night before. All the counselors of Kamsa were demons and eternal enemies of the demigods, so they became depressed upon hearing their master speak of the night's events. And although they were not very much experienced or learned, they began to give instructions to Kamsa as follows. Dear sir, let us now make arrangements to kill all children who were born within the last ten days in all towns, countries, villages, and pasturing grounds. Let us execute this plan indiscriminately. We think that the demigods cannot do anything against us if we perform these atrocities. They are always afraid of fighting with us, and even if they wish to check our activities, they will not dare to do so. Because of the immeasurable strength of your bow, they fear you. Indeed, we have practical experience that whenever you stood to fight with them and began to shower your arrows on them, they immediately began to flee in all directions just to save their lives. Many of the demigods were unable to fight with you, and they immediately surrendered themselves unto you by opening their turbans and the flag on their heads. With folded hands they begged you to spare them and said, My lord, we are all afraid of your strength. Please release us from this dangerous fight. We have also seen many times that you would never kill such surrendered fighters when they were all fearful, their bows, arrows, and chariots broken, forgetful of their military activities, and unable to fight with you. So actually we have nothing to fear from these demigods. They are very proud of being great fighters in peacetime outside of the warfield, but actually they cannot show any talent or military power on the warfield. Although Lord Vishnu, Lord Shiva, and Lord Brahma are always ready to help the demigods headed by Indra, we have no reason to be afraid of them. As far as Lord Vishnu is concerned, he has already hidden himself within the hearts of all living entities, and he cannot come out. As far as Lord Shiva is concerned, he has renounced all activities. He has already entered into the forest. And Lord Brahma is always engaged in different types of austerities and meditation. And what to speak of Indra, he is a straw in comparison to your strength. Therefore we have nothing to fear from all these demigods. But we must not neglect them, because the demigods are our determined enemies. We must be careful to protect ourselves. To root them out from their very existence, we should just engage ourselves in your service and be always ready for your command. The demons continued to say, If there is some disease in the body which is neglected, it becomes incurable. Similarly, when one is not careful about restraining the senses and lets them loose, it is then very difficult to control them at all. Therefore, we must always be very careful of the demigods before they get too strong to be subdued. The foundation of strength of the demigods is Lord Vishnu, because the ultimate goal of all religious principles is to satisfy him. The Vedic injunctions, the Brahmins, the cows, austerities, sacrifices, performances of charity and distribution of wealth are all for the satisfaction of Lord Vishnu. So let us immediately begin by killing all the Brahmins who are in charge of the Vedic knowledge and the great sages who are in charge of sacrificial, ritualistic performances. Let us kill all the cows, which are the source of butter which is so necessary for performing sacrifices. Please give us your permission to kill all these creatures. Actually, the limbs of the transcendental body of Lord Vishnu are the Brahmins, the cows, Vedic knowledge, austerity, truthfulness, sense and mind control, faithfulness, charity, tolerance, and performance of sacrifices. Lord Vishnu is situated in everyone's heart and is the leader of all demigods, including Lord Shiva and Lord Brahma. We think that to kill Lord Vishnu is to persecute the great sages and Brahmins, said the ministers. Thus being advised by the demonic ministers, Kamsa, who was from the very beginning the greatest rascal, decided to persecute the Brahmins and Vaishnavs, being entrapped by the shackles of all-devouring eternal time. He ordered the demons to harass all kinds of saintly persons, and then he entered his house. The adherents of Kamsa were all influenced by the modes of passion, as well as illusion by the modes of ignorance, and their only business was to create enmity with saintly persons. Such activities can only reduce the duration of life. The demons accelerated the process and invited their deaths as soon as possible. The result of persecuting saintly persons is not only untimely death. The act is so offensive that the actor also gradually loses his beauty, his fame, and his religious principles, and his promotion to higher planets is also checked. Driven by various kinds of mental concoctions, the demons diminish all kinds of welfare. An offense at the lotus feet of the devotees and brahmins is a greater offense than that committed at the lotus feet of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Thus, a godless civilization becomes the source 
of all calamities. Thus ends the Bhaktivedanta purport of the fourth chapter of Krishna. Kamsa begins his persecutions. To be continued. Till then stay tuned. Hare Krishna.